Yeah. All right, scholars, let's get to work. Uh, Friday, first test. Let me give you some overall kind of advice and coaching on how to prepare yourselves. Uh, formless sheets are permitted. Actually, I'm going to hand them out, and then I'll collect them at the end. They're not going to be too useful this time, but you're welcome to have one there. Uh, I'll pass them out. Don't, don't write on them. Bring your calculators. I know I say that all the time, but every semester, some unfortunate cadet forgets a calculator, which makes these tests much more difficult. I don't want you to borrow them or loan them during the exam. Right. Check your batteries. The things you should be doing to prepare, the talk to. Uh, the notes are up in Angel, the, the PowerPoint slides that I've been using transition to. They're your best overview of what we covered and the material you need to know. So go through those, that's a nice, concise presentation. Make sure you know that material. You've got a, a quiz to review. You have Stat Lab, which is due tomorrow night at 11. But I'm sure you're almost done already, right? So it's relative. 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 In terms of Stat Lab, we don't have any technical issues left in Stat Lab, right? Everyone's up and running? Yes. Stat Lab is a great resource for practicing the kinds of problems you're going to see. And you can also ask it to give you a quiz or a test, like a post-chapter test. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, I know you mentioned this before, but uh, we don't have to do those? That is correct. Okay. There's invert, inadvertently, they got created when I set up your classes. Mm -hmm. A chapter quiz, chapter test, no. They're, they're not assigned, they're not included in your grade. But you can go make use of those to drill. The other area, make sure you're proficient on the calculator. So far, we don't have a very big repertoire. L1, L2, make sure you know how to enter list of numbers. And be familiar with our favorite one bar stats. And we've used that to get means and standard deviation weighted means. That's also a technique we use. So make sure you're proficient with that. There will be a question or two that requires, it doesn't require, it allows you to use the calculator. But those are easy points, right? You don't want to miss those. That, those are layups. You want to get those. Beyond that, uh, as I put the test together, I've noticed my style is kind of changing. I'm most interested in your ability to reason statistically and understand what the numbers mean and how we use these statistics. So there will be questions, and we're going to go over and over test right here for review. Of, you know, what's <coughs> what is a uh, cluster sampling technique? Okay, there'll be questions like that, but I'll also be asking questions to get you to think about what you're looking at and the meaning of it behind it. All right. Last uh, bit of advice, make sure you know our, our language, our symbols. We've got mu's and x bars. We've got sigmas and s's. And sigma squareds and s squareds. These are population parameters, population mean. So if you're asked to define it, it's not the mean, it's the population mean. Sample mean, population standard deviation, sample standard deviation, population variance, sample variance. All right? And as we go through the course, we'll, we'll add to that, add, add to that list of more symbols. Those for sure you should know. All right. If there are any questions or requests, something you'd like to go over, I'll be glad to do that. If not, I'm going to pull up an exam from a couple of years ago just to give you an idea of what they look like. And we're going to start taking them. Yeah, right? So first, any requests? Any area that's yes? Yeah, I'm calculator. 
That's the key function you need to know. I think that's the only one we've used so far. Yeah. Yeah. And the question is? Uh, actually, there's one on this uh, sample test. So let me get to that. <coughs> All right, let's do problem number 13. I want all of you engaged and working on this just like this was Friday. Do you have, is this on Angel as well? It's not going to be Angel. It's here and now. I should see fingers going on a calculator, putting in an L1. Make sure you're proficient in your calculator usage. check you entered the right numbers. Um, it would be a shame to get five answers wrong because you put in an incorrect number in one of our staff or a list. All right. Is everyone everyone know how to put in those, that set of numbers in L1? Any issues there? Check. Check. Once you get those in, it's L bar stats L1. And that is reading them off and matching them to the question. <coughs> what symbol on the calculator would correspond to the mean? X, X bar. X, X bar. And what value did you get? 16. 16. What symbol on the calculator would correspond to the median? Pause here. MED. MED. MED period. Abbreviation for medium. What's that value? You have an MED. There we go. Oh, no period, just MED. How'd you get to the I don't Scroll down on the second one. Anybody else having calculator difficulties? Oh, so it's it's that help what our status is. You don't have a frequency. It's true. You don't have a frequency. You use the frequency list. We're doing weighted averages. Or we're using the weighted frequency table. All right. Give me attention up front. What's attention? What's what's the status here? Good. Any issues with one bar stats? What's the sign for you? We don't have a, a symbol for it, though. Uh, what does it come up in now? MED. Yeah. Okay. Scroll down and see MED. Oh, I do. Yeah. All right. Good. Which standard deviation. Which symbol do you use on the calculator in this problem? S X. Is that a question or an answer? S X. It's S of X because it has an X. Sample data values. This is a sample, so we're, we are asked the calculator for the sample standard deviation, and the symbol is S sub X. And what did you get? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 8.3? 
<laughs> I'll make it clear on a Friday. I don't need to see nine decimal places. <laughs> I know that with first semester students, they feel like this is college. I must have nine decimal places. He's going to count it off. I will give you a guidance on Friday on how many decimal places places are appropriate. All right. Q1. What is the definition of Q1? Twelve. Twelve is the definition of Q1. Oh wait, never mind. That's um, that's the that's the number. Forty-two. That's the meaning of life. Q1 is the first quartile. So what percentile is Q1? Twenty-fifth percentile. Q1 is the twenty-fifth percentile. I just toward the bottom of one of our stats. What does that mean? Like, what does the number 12 say about 25% percentile? The 12 of the sample data are Q1? No, it means if you ordered this number in a list from smallest to largest, mm -hmm. and use those formulas that we went over in the previous class on how to find the percentile, all right, you would get the answer to 12. 12 is the 25th percentile in this small, tiny little data set, which means 25% values. Well. It's not enough. I mean, it's 10. It's an easy number. It's a quarter, right? You're free to do it that way, too. Or you can use what the calculator is. Yeah. I'll say. All right, so what did we get for Q1? 12. 12. Just out of curiosity, what's Q2? Q2 Median. Go ahead. Median. Q2 is the median. Second quartile, second quarter, 50%, 50th percentile, median. What's the symbol for median? We don't have a, a symbol. But. All right, the range. You have min and max on one of our stats. The range is just the difference between the two. 29. Range is 29. points. Real easy. Okay? I always get asked that question. And if I said 97, what would it change? Would you study differently? If I said 5? Yes, I study way more. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right. yeah. Then there's one question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will tell you this, this is not a secret. It's, it's uniform across all the sections of 105, so it's just not peculiar to me. There will be seven multiple choice questions, and they're consistent across the section. All the instructors got together, and we have seven multiple choice questions, which tend to be usually the least favorite of the questions. Let's go through these quickly. I'm going to go down in rows. All of you to be answering them. Then I'm going to ask, starting with uh, Paul, go right down the row and get your answer. All right? So get your game faces on. This is Friday. First question. That does make sense because histograms give us the shape of the distribution. So if you want to compare heights of Dutchmen and heights of uh, Englishmen, a histogram would be a good tool to do. You'd have two histograms, one for each. All right, number two, Sanford Crane, here and back. I'll give you a <laughs> There's a question. Um, 
we've got to get everything at once here. There. So it would be E. Okay. So, and how did you get that? Added all the uh, frequencies up and then took the age group 51 to 60 and divided it by the number of something, 8 divided by the total frequency. That's how you do it. Okay. A relative frequency, you're taking a frequency and turning these numbers into percentages or proportions, portions of the whole. You added all the frequencies together and what? I got 40, but I guess you didn't have to do it right over there. So I said there's 40 officers. So it's 8 out of the 40 were in that, in this class. So that's the relative frequency. And all the relative frequencies add up to what special number? 100% or 1 if you have them as decimals. Okay, does that appear to be a normal distribution? Get that normal. Okay, let's see a D. Choice. Let's see. Two yeses, but this reason is, is more complete. Okay, it's not perfectly symmetric about the peak, but it's fairly close. The peak's in the middle, then we decrease down to the, uh, on the edges. All right, so everyone's got an A so far, right? Okay, the student. None of the above. What does it represent? Sample mean. It's a sample mean. X bar is the sample mean. All right. Which of the following is not a measure of center? And we are coming. E. All the above. All the above. Oh, actually, we have uh, no, uh, A. A, the range. The range is a measure of. Uh, uh, variation that but we don't really use it much because well why don't we use the range? What's its Achilles heel? Outliers. Outliers. What is the third uh, center? Yeah, the mean and the median are measures What's of center. The third center? There are three, right? Three center values? Well, mode. <laughs> mode and there's weighted means. Also. Alright, number six. In Hamilton, there's the plate. Today. Okay. A. Do you agree, Sus? Um, no, you can see. Dad, what do you think? Uh, I think it's C2. Why do you think it's C? Because uh, closer sample you're taking like one area, you're like randomly picking an area and then interviewing everybody in that area. Which is what this is. So yes. It, it's, it's a cluster because I pick, I'm categorizing my sample, stratifying it, however you want to call it, classifying it. Then I randomly pick one or more of those strata classifications and take everyone in it. That would be a cluster. Okay, number seven. Hey, Rocco. Okay. Oh, um, perspective? C. Final answer? Prospective, looking into the future. Study now and then get in four years. All right, I can see now I'm going to have to make this test harder. I'll work that one out. I don't want to insult your intelligence. Sir, there's still half the room to go, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be
we have some outliers coming. <laughs> Never know. Sir. Never happen. Never happen. Okay, let's consider that. Is the distribution skewed? And if yes, in what direction? Where am I? I am. Are you? Yes. Yes. Uh, skewed to the right. Skewed to the right. Are there outliers in this sample? <coughs> and if there are, what category would they be in? Yeah, well, Marty, you're smiling. <laughs> I'm trying to think because I don't think we really enjoy statistics. I'm going to say yes. You're trying to say yes. I think one's an outlier. What, what would an outlier look like in a histogram? Out there, like past the zero, or more Yeah, well, past zero. What's the zero mean? There's no one in there. Yeah, there's no one in that category. There's only two here, and there's one out here. There's no precise definition of an outlier except that it's out there for the There are some uh, rules of thumb on how to define outliers, but it's somewhat subjective. I think everyone agreed that that is an outlier. How many data values in the set? Could you say that two is also an outlier? Two. No, I can't. Now, there's a confusion here. I'm glad you brought that up. Why is two not an outlier? Because it's before zero. Yes. Because it's right after the, uh, the eight for the 98 through 99. All right, but I need to switch your thinking around. Those twos and eights, what are those? Are those data values? They're, They're frequencies. So instead of thinking of two as an outlier, it's this class between 100 and 109 is which is where the outliers would be. And I've seen that confusion in the past. People think of these numbers as the data values. No, those are just the frequencies. <coughs> So probably not. No. Uh, the answer is? Huh. He's smiling too. People love statistics. It's great. So it's seven here, I guess? <coughs> I guess that would be what? How would I find the number of data values? Not the number of classes, the number of data values. What do these numbers represent? They're the number of data values in each class. Or you could, or you could read them right off the chart. So to find the number of data values, you just add 15 and 15 is 30, 40, about 50. Sorry, that was, that was my first choice, it just seemed too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't psych yourself out now. What is the class width? Ten. It's ten. Successive lowers or successive uppers. Well done. Ah, now on a little more thought. Which class contains the median value? The 80 to 89. Oh, she said it without hesitation. Because well, there's 30 on one side and then it meets in the middle in that one because there's um, 11 on the other side so it's going to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. Do you have to find a median first? Oh. Well, you really can't find the median. We, we don't have the list of data values, do we? Isn't it? Like, didn't we go wherever um, the, it goes um, mean, median, and then median? Or is it? Like, not always in that order, but... If it's, this is skewed to the right, so in this distribution, the mean tends to be to the right of the median. <coughs> All right. But the question is, you don't have the 50 data values in front of you. You have this histogram. <coughs> Which of those classes contains the median? Contains the median. You can't say for sure what the median is, but you can say which class it's in. 
right? What's the, what is the definition of a medium? Well, okay, a little more detail. The data point on the, uh, well, center. the center of the data. So, uh, keep coming, you're getting warmer. What percentile is the median? 50%. 50th percentile, that means 50% of the values are below. You've got 50 data points. So the median would be bigger than how many of those data points? 25. Well, there's 15 there. The median will not be in here. I've got 30, but by the time I get through here, the median is going to be somewhere in there. Yes? Yes, <coughs> This is an example of what I would call reasoning about the data. You know, the, the stuff like the class with this little bit of Mickey Mouse stuff, throw those in so you can have some confidence, get some points, but reasoning about the graph, being able to interpret it, is I think the most important. Uh, I won't, I'll skip these right now, but what you'd be asked to do is take that histogram and create cumulative relative frequency tables. We did those, and I'm sure you did them in Stat Lab. Make sure you know how to do those. And make sure you know how to interpret them. All right, next question. Uh, let's see. Fifth house. How would we compute Larry Bird's z-score? What's the formula for a z-score? And I didn't hear the top, it is? 8.9. The 8.6 minus uh, 8.9. <coughs> That's my x. My x is a data value. That's Larry Bird. <coughs> That's mu. That is the mean points per game of all NBA players. That's the population. And that is my Sigma, that's a population standard deviation. So make sure you know this little formula. It's uh, x minus mu over sigma would be the population z score. Is that on the sheet? I'm not certain. I believe it is. But this is something that yeah, is so it fundamental. Is. It is there? Yeah. Okay. Side relief. X minus X bar over S sample uh, Z score. And uh, I saw someone punch it in the calculator. What do we have? 2.5. So is Bird an unusually high score in the NBA? Why? I'm asking the questions. <laughs> What do we consider unusual values? Or let's put it the easy way. What are the usual values? A z-score between minus two and two, or another way of saying that is within two standard deviations of the mean. Because what's our rule of thumb? How much of the data is between two standard deviations of the mean typically? 95%. 95%. So if we're saying it's unusual, you're in that 5% or one out of 20. <coughs> so this is important stuff. Understand more than just the formula. Can you use it to reason about the statistics? Uh, all right, we've got two more NBA players. They're in their Z scores. Who's the most unusual player? Jones or Smith? Smith. Because? Because he's more than two standard deviations away. More than two standard deviations away, and 
Is the sign important? He's got a negative z score though. No, it's just how far away you are from zero. So when you're comparing z scores to see which is the most unusual, it's just use the absolute value. All right. Can you read that still? No. There are two box plots, and they represent the ages when actors or actresses first won the Academy Award. The first question you're asked to label it. Label one. So looks like this. Who's at bat? Yes. Okay. What's this point? <coughs> No, that's the value in general. It is the um, it's the minimum. Minimum. And this one would be the max. Max. He's on fire now. What would this point be? That would be the first quarter. Q1. Your first quartile. First time. So what would that would be? Third quartile. Q3. And this bar in the middle is medium. The median or Q2. There you go. Second question. Which distribution has the greater median? Last row. Uh, Lucas? can't read this top or bottom, you probably can't read the letters. Which of these has the highest median? Hmm? The top one. That's the median age of the actors. That vertical line is <coughs> easily to the right of the median age of the actresses. Uh, what's the next question? <coughs> All right. Approximately what percentage of actresses are younger than 40 when they reach, when they win an Academy Award? Blow this up a little bit more. About what percent of actresses are less than 40 or younger when they win an Academy Award? Besides? Got that? <coughs> Excellent. Good. That's Q3. That's the 75th percentile. So we can look at this and say, oh, about 75% of the time an actress is 40 or younger than she wins the Academy Award. And, all right, we've done that. All right, the keys. Fourteen, screen or continuous? Number of points scored in a football game. Continuous. What's a hallmark of a continuous variable? What makes it different than a discrete? Okay, who can help them out? I don't think he can hear you. Oh, so that's great because it has a definite ending. A definite ending. Well, you mean it's a countable number. It's a countable number, and this concept of whether there are gaps or not. Is there always a value between any two other values? So if it's 21 to 20, is it possible to have a 20.5 score? No. So it's discrete. It's like integers. Height of a tree. Stay with you. That's continuous. That's continuous, yeah. The only assumption we're making here is that infinite precision or measurement. So it's always possible to find one height between any two other heights. There's always room in there. 
All right, we're back at the front row. Paul, oh, aren't you lucky? Number 15, can you take us through those four? Number of pounds, an apple, and a heart. Appreciate it. Because he's a, uh, has an obvious zero, there's uh, an obvious difference between the numbers and the numbers actually have a mean. Yeah, the differences are meaningful. There's, ob there's an obvious zero, I can order them. Measurements of pounds and distances and times, those kind of things, they're always going to be ratio. State where a person was born. No, no. it's just like a lady. I can't order them. Well, I suppose you can alphabetize states. Year as in 2005, because there's no obvious zero. It's hot. We're good. The rankings of professional golfers. Or we don't. Because, uh, I mean, you can rank them because there's no obvious difference between the different numbers. Yeah, the intervals are comparable and meaningful. Everybody get those answers? I see heads shaking. That's good. Question? Which one was the state of nominal? Yeah, that's nominal. Right? It's like a label. I can't put it in a natural order. It's just like a sticky post-it note saying, this is it. And then the that's last one is ordinal. What's the difference in Because I thought ranking professional golfers does have a zero, or like a one to ten, versus years don't have a zero. Okay. Ranking of professional golfers. I don't know if Tiger's still one or not. All the way down to 50th and 51st. <coughs> well, it certainly passes the tense that there is an ordering to them. Okay. Now the next to go to a least uh, important the interval then what has to be true? I have zero. No, that's it. Uh, only the ratio. <coughs> well, they have to have. Uh, if I I might order them to get to interval, the differences have to be meaningful. Okay. Um, and you're saying between third and fourth person, the difference is, is one. And between the 50th and 51st, that difference is one in the ranking. Can I really compare those and is that a meaningful measure? No, not really. Now, what's an example of a, an interval then? We've got ordinal, and then where the differences are meaning, we've got two classic examples of that kind of measure. Now, Bob? Maybe not. How about uh, years? So there's an order. Are the intervals meaningful and comparable? Yeah, I'm measuring years here, so difference that's one year that's the same as that one year what is this example missing to make it ratio there's no natural zero the zero year is not the start of time the start of the universe that's just when we decide to start counting All right okay you're doing good and that is we completed a test how about that well done I've got the five minutes left. Uh, anything else you'd like to go over? Any other material? <coughs> Feeling good about it? Yes, sir. All right. Then uh, we dismiss. I'll be glad to stay here and answer any questions.